Welcome to this video tutorial on how to use distance maps in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video I'm going to be using the latest version of V-Ray which is V-Ray 6 for Rhino and looking at the new feature called distance maps that allows to change the look and behavior of a material based upon its distance from certain objects within your scene. To test this out I've just created a simple scene which is a kind of plane here with a sphere floating above that plane and we're going to apply a distance material to this plane here which will vary its color based upon its location from this sphere. Now to do this I'm going to begin by opening up the V-Ray Asset Editor which we can find here and creating a brand new material by clicking on the Material tab and creating a generic material there. We're just going to call this Material Distance time being. And in that material we're going to just go to the Diffuse tab, which you can find by just opening up this right hand panel here. And under Color, we're going to select the Texture slot, which is this checkerboard square on the right. In that, we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and locate the Distance map, and we're going to apply it to that material. Now, once you've applied it, you'll see we have a few parameters that have opened up here. We've got a kind of near color, a far color, and a distance parameter here. And this distance will be based upon whatever units you're using in your scene. I'm currently using meters in this scene, so this would be a distance of 10 meters. Now, what we're gonna do before we have a play around with these parameters, I'm just gonna select my base plane here, right click on my distance material, and apply it to selection like so. And if we then load up the V-Ray frame buffer like so, and we can just do a quick preview of this render just by clicking on the interactive render option. We can have a look and we might see that you can't really see any difference in the object at the moment. We've applied that distance map on like so. But the kind of plane is still white. Now the reason for that is if we click back on the blue map to go back into the distance map parameters, we currently haven't got any objects with which the distance map is applied to. Now the way to add this object in, all we need to do is select our sphere from our scene and click on the add objects setting like so and that will add that sphere into the list of objects which our distance parameter applies to. Now you can see it's got a kind of code here which is the object code that the object is given in Rhino and if we look back on our frame buffer you'll see that we've now got this kind of black sort of shadow that's formed under the sphere and this is based upon this near color. Now what will happen is if I kind of keep my frame buffer open but move that sphere closer to the plane, you'll see that dark shadow kind of gets darker based upon its distance from that sphere. So the closer we put it, you can see we now have this sort of dark pattern that is the color closest to the sphere and it fades out to a white as it's further away. We can also play around with these parameters and adjust that distance. So if we do the distance closer, you'll see the dark circle gets closer to the object and if we do it further away it will get further away. So that's essentially how the distance map works. It will vary the color based upon its distance from certain objects. Now we can tweak these colors to be whatever colors we want them to be or we can even add textures into this parameter to vary a texture with a distance from an object. Something this is quite good for is for when you have edges of a kind of grass or other sort of landscape materials that you might want to vary depending on how close they are to other materials like water or certain kind of buildings or other objects in the scene. The way we could do this is we could put a far color as a bitmap instead of a color here. And then if we just select a grass color, for the far and then for the near I'm going to do the same thing select the bitmap and use a dirt color for the near there and then we'll just dial in this amount and distance you'll see that as we get closer to the sphere here it's got a kind of dirt to sort of color there and it fades out to a grass as we move further away so it's quite a kind of useful application in how you can use these distance maps to essentially vary the look of your textures depending on their distance from certain objects. Now as well as doing it purely with the texture and the kind of look and feel of a texture we can also use distance maps for when we scatter objects in the scene or when we use something like V-Ray Fur to create grass or other kind of objects in that scene. The way this works, and I'll just pause my render for the time being, is we can do this just by going into our texture slot here. And we're going to create a new texture. So we're not going to make a material this time, we're just going to make a distance map as its own texture. 
So click on distance and we'll call this grass here. Same again, I'm going to select my sphere and click on the add objects to add that sphere to my distance map. And we're going to keep it as a black and a white color for the time being. The reason for this is what this is going to do is wherever it's white, it's going to place my grass and wherever it's black, the grass won't be placed. Now, in order to add some fur or some grass to this scene, we're just going to select the V-Ray Fur object. And we can select our plane first, then click on this V-Ray Fur and it will add that fur to selection. Now what you might have, like mine is doing, is it's actually adding it on the back side of the object. So we can always just flip it around in that case to make sure it's standing up. With V-Ray Fur, if you haven't used this before, you can find it in the geometries panel, which is here. And then we can dial in what that currently looks like. Now, if we open up my render frame again, let's kind of have a quick look at that. You'll see it's probably gonna look something like this. It doesn't look very realistic. So let's lower the height of that down we're going to lower the thickness of that to a sort of blade of grass i'm going to do it at a sort of five millimeter thickness maybe make it a little bit longer for this example and then we're going to up the count to something like a hundred or a thousand depending on how much grass we want maybe 400 should be fine for that there we go now if you also want to give this a material we can just create a quick grass material here just by making a new generic material and then just under the color we're just going to drop in that bitmap of grass like so okay and then what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to our geometry objects find that fur scroll down to the bottom and under material we'll just turn that on and add that kind of generic material that grass onto it now where we can begin to use the distance maps for this is in controlling the placement of this fur depending on how close we are to the sphere so the way we can do this is if we go back up to our fur parameters we have this density map option and if i go back to my kind of grass distance map here we're going to copy that we're going to go into the fur and we're going to paste it as an instance in there you'll see that there's now no grass growing around where that sphere is. And if I kind of play around with some of the parameters of that distance map, as in if I kind of make the distance longer, you'll see the grass will sort of move away from the object. If we do it closer, the grass will get much closer to the object. So it's kind of really useful way of using these maps to kind of give me a sort of certain placement of my grass depending on certain objects in the scene. If we wanted to flip that round and just have the grass growing next to the object, all we need to do is flip this far color and near color. So if I change the near color to a black, far color to a black, sorry, and near color to a white, like so, you'll see the grass now just grows around the sphere. And we can change how much that grows around the sphere, like so. We can always go back and tweak the length of the grass as well if we want it slightly longer in this scene. And the great thing about this is you can just move your sphere and the grass will sort of follow it too. So if I move it over there, then the grass will kind of be located on that edge. If we move it over here, it will be on this edge like so. So really useful way of kind of locating certain patches of grass based upon its distance to a certain object in the scene. And this has got really good uses for if you just want kind of grass in certain parts of the scene based upon their relationship with other objects, or if you wanted to kind of cut paths through a landscape and just have the grass growing in the negative space, you can do that too using these distance maps. So that was just a quick introduction to how to use distance maps in V-Ray for Rhino. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on rendering or texturing or kind of image creation in V-Ray, Rhino and other software, please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.